I want to take this opportunity to say a little bit more about the so-called commitments of the Abbott Liberal government to defence <coughs> manufacturing and the effects of this betrayal on my community in Newcastle. Family-owned shipbuilder Forjax, one of Newcastle's largest employers, could not have been more clear in their warnings that they will have to close their shipyards at Carrington and Tomago next year, in 2015, laying off more than 900 highly skilled tradesmen and women unless the federal government expedited decisions on future naval shipbuilding projects and started a genuine effort to allocate work to Australian manufacturers. They were not asking for a handout. They weren't asking for favourites. They could happily you know, compete in an open tendering process, provided there was a level playing field, of course, for that tendering process. We knew they've already had to let go. Four Jacks have already had to let go 100 employers as the work from the AWD contract begins to taper off. The lack of interest from this government on that front is, you know, is profound. Um, but I have met with Four Jacks management on a regular basis. Indeed, so has, um, at my invitation, the leader of the opposition, the shadow minister for defence, the shadow assistant defence minister. The members for Shortland and Charlton, we've all joined and met with uh, Tomigo, up at the Tomigo shipyard, meeting with the men and women who are actually building Australia's air warfare destroyers. Four Jacks are an employer that doesn't want to give up. Even when in danger of closing, uh, they are still employing more than 80 apprentices and they continue to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on training and improvements every month. Yet this may all be to no avail. Forjax and other shipbuilders in Australia have been unjustly maligned in commentary by the Defence Minister and others when it comes to this AWD build. However, as a recent Australian National Audit Office confirmed, there was a decision to build, made to build AWDs here in Australia. And yes, it was a fully conscious decision knowing full well that there would be a premium to pay so that the industry so that the Australian shipbuilding industry could indeed be built up so that the workforce was adequately skilled and assembled in the areas of need so that the capital could be invested and that the industry would be brought to world class levels in terms of quality and in terms of production Having now paid that premium price, the Australian taxpayers have already paid to have all of that capacity and investment, um, and we've got an industry at world-class uh, standard, we now see the government totally abandoning that investment at precisely the moment when investment should be coming. But instead of realising that capacity and committing to a rolling build of frigates and submarines here in Australia, this government is instead sending those jobs offshore. That's right. They deliberately locked out Australian shipbuilders from building for contracts for those two new supply ships earlier this year, citing an inability for Australian shipbuilders to undertake the work. A claim that was strongly refuted by our shipbuilders, by the unions, by the workforce and others in a recent Senate inquiry into the decision as to how and why this government excluded Australian manufacturers from that tendering process. In recent weeks, we've seen evidence that the Abbott Liberal government um, now plans to send the submarines uh, contracts back to Japan. More jobs offshore. Thousands of highly skilled jobs in the shipbuilding industry are at risk across the country, including 910 workers in Newcastle because the Abbott government is sending jobs offshore. When the Prime Minister said he was going to create a million new jobs, we, didn't, we thought they were going to be in Australia, not overseas. I urge the government to abandon this bill before us. It's bad for Australian industry. It's bad for Australian jobs. Unlike the Abbott Liberal government, Labor believes there is a future for manufacturing in Australia and the automotive industry is a much part of that future.